Hi everyone and welcome to FRD TV. It is day one of New Zealand Fashion Week. It's an extremely busy day. We've got Catherine Wilson doing the first ever footwear show. Sabelle, Sarah Lilly, Juliet Hogan, Zambezi. It's going to be crazy. Make sure you tune in to FRD TV because we bring you all the backstage interviews. We're here with Laurie Fern who just opened Fashion Week on a completely environmentally friendly buzz. How are you feeling? Yay. In a, um, overwhelmed, looking forward to the first glass of champagne, but that was a really um, amazing point in my career, I think, you know, all for anyone to be able to do that. A, open a show at Fashion Week in the 10th year, but also be the first eco-friendly collection in New Zealand to be shown at Fashion Week. So at 17 years, when did you, you've been designing for 17 years, when did you decide, you're like, look, I think we can do this better, we want to be brilliant with our environment, we live in New Zealand, it's clean and green, and I want to get on this buzz. When, when did that happen for you? Um, I was, and I was always aware of that you know, kind of had the blingers up a little bit because I felt like I couldn't do anything about the, the fabrics and the way they were produced. And then when I had the babies, the number two, I kind of thought, well, hold on, why am I buying organic clothes for her? And why can't I sell, you know, why can't we turn this around? Also, the discovery of a pair of trainers, which I have in my bag, uh, Veja, I just love the way that they developed their whole business around the shoe, which was fair trade, um, organic cotton, and they were styly and I wanted them you know and I thought okay no that is a design process we can do it so let's just start that now okay and now I read in the press release that every garment has an eco credential what is an eco credential for those who don't know an eco credential it's an interesting and there are no hard and fast rules and there is no perfect there are just better choices Mm -hmm. so for us the way we've gone about eco credentials particularly with this collection is the fabric choices Mm -hmm. fundamentally for us that is about enduring design so it is about making clothes that you want to have with you for a long time and that work well for you Uh, secondly it's about local manufacture but thirdly for us particularly here was the dyeing processes the choice of fabrics in which we used organic cottons hemp Tinsels, um, brains going blank right now because I don't want it to. Our printing processes, which were all printed locally to Ecotech standard, all the embroidery done locally. So it was really trying to tick as many boxes as we could. Now, of course, we've always really want to be conscious about this, but how hard is it and how much does it change your collection? The fact of limiting design, actual price points, and things like that as well. Mm. It has been a really interesting process, Edda, and I'd love to talk about this in depth. Um, and it has taken us a while to get it right so we've been going for five years we started the first year with 20 percent I think we sent everyone an organic t-shirt and it was really lame you know and so I I own that but I think just pursuing it and the researching has allowed us to get better and I think that's why I'm so proud of this collection I feel like environmentally we're getting it right Um, and so ease no it wasn't easy but it can be done and I think that that was the challenge with fashion week we didn't know we could achieve it and I'd put my hand up and then went I went, oh shit, what have I done now? But we did achieve it. And and so to me, the fabrics were there. So it's like life. It feels like when you source it, when you try and find it, it's actually always there. Okay. Well, thank you, Laura. It is a beautiful collection. Oh, yeah, and we, we at Front Row are very proud of you Yay. too because it is very wearable. It is beautiful. I can see it being in our water years. Yeah. So congratulations. Well Thanks, done. Anna. That's lovely. Thank you. Hi, we're here at the Mac PhD Lounge with Juliet Hogan right after your show, the morning after the night before. How are you feeling? People are saying it was a really good show, so that's nice to kind of have that yes. feedback. Let me say, firstly, it was a beautiful show. I love it. And I know that you're saying that everyone's saying that Juliet Hill, Hogan Girl has changed. She still is there, but I think she's slightly sexier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she's grown up a little bit, and she's got some new dimensions to her personality, I think. I like it. Yeah. Now, first time you've ever really been using leather, and yeah. there's a lot of it. How is that working with that? Um, it's been really fun. I like. I love. I love the idea of different textures and feelings of fabrics in the collection, and that's like leather brings a whole new kind of look. And I kind of think it has made the girl wear a little bit more sexy, but the pieces are still so classic and clean, yeah. like the pieces that I would wear myself. Yeah, I love the cigarette pants with the little fur, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the frill around yeah. the top. Yeah. What do you think was going through your head when you were doing this collection? So when I first started kind of thinking about it, it was kind of 1960s house, so I've been watching a lot of Mad Men. Yeah. It's kind of an evolution from the summer collection. Yeah. I don't know, girls that look really beautiful and really feminine, with a kind of little bit of mischief. Well, the Mad Men girls are kind of sexy, so I guess that's where it's coming from. Yeah, yeah, I love Mad Men. I love the idea of being a housewife, but would want to be a housewife that dressed really nicely. <laughs> 
clothes with me here. And so you split the show into all the blondes at the beginning and all the roots at the end. Is there a reasoning behind that? Yeah, it's kind of so we started, the idea behind it was she started off really nice and demure and was wearing um, nude sort of colours with pretty makeup and pretty hair and then she progressively got kind of a little bit more um, darker and moodier. So by the end we had the brunettes um, with kind of big dark eyes, darker lips, a little bit more attitude, a bit more messy hair. Just, I think it was a nice, something new to do a new way for me to present the collection, kind of a little bit more of a story behind it, so hopefully people got that. So you say brunettes are sexy? Is a brunette or blonde? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> blondes are innocent, brunettes are... Oh, so you're the good girl then. You're the good, good girl. girl. Yeah. Okay, well, you've heard it here. Juliet is the good girl and I'm apparently naughty. That's okay, I can live with that. Thank you so much for having a chat with us. Not a problem, thanks, Emma. Anna.